Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's good to have you here. Another week with Transformation Ministries. I'm Pastor Anthony L. Walker here at uh, Transformation Ministry, located at 115 Kathy Avenue in Fayetteville, Georgia, uh, 30214. If you're in the area, please stop by on Saturdays at noon. We have our service. Uh, if you're not close by, then it's okay to get in the car and drive here. Come on, just start a little early. You know, uh, it's much needed. I have a great message. As you can see on the monitor, the message title is A Present Future of Days Past. A Present Future of Days Past. So here at Transformation Ministries, your life will be changed by the word and by the love of God Almighty. So I, I hope that you stay tuned with me each week to see what thus says the Lord. And um, uh, if you like what you're seeing, what you're receiving, just share it with someone. Let someone else know. Be a blessing to someone. Uh, it's much needed that we do that. I don't know why some people are afraid to even talk about God or share the things of God. But you're going to be held accountable. I'm not saying for not sending this message. But you, if you are saved, then your responsibility is to be a disciple and, and make disciples. You got to share God. If you love God, you're going to talk about God. You're going to promote God. That's not my message. But um, uh, this is my message, a present future of days past. <laughs> so we'll get started. But thank you all for, for tuning in. And forgive my rants. I may do it again. And I'm pretty sure I will. But anyway, I just want to talk about uh, something today. You may find this message to be a bit odd today, a little peculiar, or perhaps gravely disturbing. I don't know how you might receive it. Then on the other hand, you may find it to be intriguing. You know, you might find it to be fascinating and even captivating. Uh, this message is a testament of two separate experiences that of the same event that occurred in two bizarre dreams that I've had. And, and that's what uh, prompted me to do this message is when I had a second dream about a dream I had in the past. The first encounter took place, this first dream took place some years ago on the morning of a Thanksgiving holiday. I woke up at 4.44 a.m. Uh, from this dream. So in this dream, it was a place. Uh, it was, I was not sure where this place was, but um, in this place was uh, every desirable thing that you could imagine. You know, so this dream allowed me to see things in a way that I can't see in the in the, my awakened state. <clears throat> the weird thing about this dream is that whichever direction I would look, you know, because I'm like a pan around this room, you know, but in this dream, and then, you know, when I look here, I just see what's in this room. But in that dream, I was able to see a lot more than that. The view would open up. Uh, wherever I would look, it's like a view would open it. Look this here, look there. Another view would open up. I pan over here. Something else would be exposed. Um, and then I would be in that place. Wherever, whatever opened up, I am in that place in this dream. But uh, in this place, there was every desirable thing there. And so uh, when I would adjust my focus, I would see something else that was enticing. It would alter my view and it would change my destination everywhere my eyes would go. And it's just like, a, here's a vision of this and that. And it's like one of those things where you're scrolling and you see something and you can open it up. And when I did that, in my mind, I was there. And I wasn't just looking at it. I was there. I was in the place. Almost like a quantum leap into something. And it just took me to that destination. Um, at first sight, I saw a packed resorts beach. It was this beach and it was full of people having the time of their life on this beach. They were showing off their sculptured bodies. I mean, they were in skimpy swimwear that left nothing to the imagination. Um, uh, the, the people were eating, they were drinking, they were playing. The sands were filled with lust, with sedu seduction and also fornication but the people were having the time of their life in this place. And so what did I do next? I closed my eyes and reopened them and found myself in a new destination. 
I saw all sort of sporting activities happening at the same time. And this was crazy, but that's how that dream was. Uh, I saw uh, there was football games, there were basketball games, there were tennis matches and soccer events and much more. There was just all kinds of sports as I panned the area and opened up and when I was there. And while I was there, um, I was thinking, how could this be? But it is, it was. That's what was going on. And I saw sports fans numbering in the tens of thousands and all the cheering, loud uh, noise that they were making. They were screaming uh, to uh, lift up their uh, athletic gladiators of, of today. And, you know, they were just cheering and praising them for what they were doing. There were people of all races and faces and ages in this place and social status. It did not matter. It was just all kind of people in this world. They were there um, praising the triumph of their favorite athlete. And they worshiped them for their marvelous works. You know, and it's, it's, it's funny how, you know, I see in church, Sometimes people are just so quiet, they won't lift up and say amen or, or hallelujah or thank you, Lord Jesus, or glory to God. They don't lift their voice, they whisper those things. But when they're on the field, they're like, run, man, run. They're like, catch that ball, shoot that basket. They, and they lift up their voice and they show their involvement. And I wish it was that way in the church. But then I scan to another area and our next in this next part of the dream that opened up, I saw a dark, noisy nightclubs. Not nightclub, but nightclubs. It was the various ones and different setups of those clubs. And I once heard a pastor refer to it as the place where demons dance. You know, it was a message that he was doing, and he said, this is the place where demons dance. Uh, the bars were crowded, the music was thumping, and the dance floor was congested full of people who have um, gotten dressed up, bathed in their erotic fragrances so you can catch the attention of the person. I would say the opposite sex, but these days, all oh, that's out the window. They just open up to catch whoever they can catch. Um, for a night of dancing and mingling and drinking, you know, this, this dream was crazy. It was like I was really there. It was deafening with the music thumping. The activities went on till the break of dawn. Um, the party people were impaired, and uh, uh, many of them filled with regrets the next morning. But that's what happens. I know so many people in past days who would always wake up regretting um, what occurred after their days or their nights of partying. And so as I zoomed in on the next scene, I saw many casinos. This is a crazy dream, y'all. The People's Adults Playground is what they call that. These casinos were filled with dazzling lights and sounds and dings and, be and bells uh, from the slot machines and other uh, money-hungry toys that you find in these casinos. In this, these places, credit card balances increase and bank account balances decrease and future financial plans eroded from the hopes of getting rich quick. Now, I've been to a couple of casinos myself in the past, and that's how it is. You just watch, and they bring their drinks and stuff like that. I didn't drink, but I just watched what, observed what was happening, and people was just throwing all their money. I didn't have money to, to do all that stuff with, but I observed those things, and in this dream, I saw it on a grand scale. Uh, the next view that I saw is very interesting, y'all. I saw conferences where motivational speakers was telling people how to become successful and be rich and to be powerful. And there was also mega churches there with preachers telling people the same thing. How about that? And so, you know, what telling them how to be saved was telling them how to get rich, just like those other motivational uh, conferences were doing. And in another direction, I saw amusement parks. And in another way, there was the movie theaters. And yet another, there was shopping venues. Every self-indulgent uh, thing known to mankind were in these places, in this dream. The various places of many attractions that fascinate uh, were um, kind of eerie. It was kind of eerie to just be in this type of dream and experience all these things. Any things of pleasure and gratification could be found here. 
in this dream in all of these various places. I was so tempted to participate in the happenings because people looked like they were having fun, but for some reason, I could not. Every time I wanted to uh, engage and join in on the fun, uh, this person would come up to me and would say no. They would tell me no. And so I would not do it. And so what a strange dream this was. It was very strange because um, uh, something occurred to me when I was just thinking about this. Where was God in all of this? All of these places, all of these activities, it's people full of tens of thousands and thousands upon thousands of people. And that where was God in these places. He did not seem to be in any other scenes, uh, scenes that um, where, I, where I was um, like pulled into. The places in this dream were nothing but deceptions, distractions, and disruptions, disruptions of your spiritual being and where you're supposed to be in life. None of these things were truly important. None of them. Each event was about what was pleasing to the heart and mind of the people who were there. And if you think about it, it's like that in this world. It is like that all the time. And they call it glamour. They call it, uh, you know, the, the who's who and all that thing. And people want to be a part because they feel like they're missing out on something. But it's really those people who, is, who are truly missing out on what's important. People need to be in church. Not the church telling you how to get rich and how to be powerful and wealthy, but the church to tell you how to be saved. And none of that was going on in any part of that dream. This is only temporal pleasures and temporal things that were going on. <clears throat> I'm going to read a scripture from Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 19 through 21. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedi seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, so many people have heard this particular scripture <coughs> in church all the time. And I'm sure they're probably sitting there, well, that's not me. That's not me. Or, you know, that's not me. If we are in denial, people are in denial of what the scriptures point out. And, you know, and sometimes, uh, I put it this way, in most, in most churches, though, to be honest, I, I rarely hear this type, these type of scriptures being shared. You know, God's going to bless you, count your blessings, name it and claim it. I hear those things often. But <clears throat> let me say this. When I woke up from these from this dream, I just laid in the bed thinking about the dream. I laid there for a long time. And um, I, I was wondering why was it that I could not participate? Because I really wanted to. I really wanted to. And it was during that time that, that reflecting on the dream that I realized something. And that's something that I realized is that God was there. God was in every part of the dream where I was. He was the one who kept telling me no. no. And sometimes you know God is telling you no, but you ignore it because of the peer pressure of what you have to engage in. And when God says no, no means no. No means no. And I asked myself, was this only a dream or was it something else? God says no. After having the first dream, the dream I just described to you, I noticed the number 444. As I stated, I woke up at 444 a.m. on that Thanksgiving morning. And for the following days and weeks, I would see 444 often, too often, but so often that it became, you know, got my attention. Every morning from that time, I was waking up at 444. 4, 4. 
Just walking through the house, it happened to glance at the clock, and what time was it? Four, four, four. When I go to the store, my change would be $4.44. Or I may go somewhere else and make a purchase, and it was $4.44. And 444 just kept coming up. And so, <clears throat> out of curiosity, I began to research, and there's all kinds of things out there that people will say that 444 means. And I normally don't get into uh, these kind of things, but I was curious. I saw things about your angel numbers and things like that, but I ran across something that I found to be uh, uh, relevant to, to what I was looking for. I mean, <clears throat> and it was that <clears throat> 444 represented uh, a call to action. And, you know, so I started telling people about my dreams and about that continuous sighting of 444. And so when I saw that it was a call to action, I realized that I needed to expose some things. And so I started telling people about it, my experience, but nobody really wanted to hear it. Nobody really wanted to hear it. Uh, there was a quote from George Orwell, <clears throat> and it says, the further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. So pastors, people are going to hate you. People are going to hate us when we tell the truth because it goes against everything that they're doing. No one wants to be corrected. No one wants to be told that they are wrong. No one wants to be told to stop doing something, even if it's against the will of God. So this brings me to my second dream, the one that I recently had that prompted me to do this message. The setting is in the present day of a future time. So here I am, I'm in the future. And because I'm there, it's the present day. Uh, and so in this dream, I am revisiting the days past, uh, the days of the first dream where I saw the place with many places. You know, I was going from view to view. And uh, <clears throat> I thought it was bad enough with the first dream, when I was looking at everything, when there was no love for God in that dream. But in this second dream, it was pretty much the same thing, but worse. Things have gotten even worse. It was worse than it was in the first dream. The people um, wasn't just there to have fun. People were there to sin on purpose, and they did it continuously. There was no thought of God. It's just that the people were doing what they felt like they needed <clears throat> to do. People have become so desensitized to uh, wickedness and uh, they have strayed so far from uh, God that uh, to the point of becoming oblivious to the enemy's tactics, to the deceptions of the enemy and are in denial of their own behaviors. People think that they are good. <clears throat> It has become much more urgent now than when I was telling people about the first dream when it occurred some years ago and that people weren't really listening. But now it's become more urgent that I notify people and warn people about the world's clear and present dangers. Clear and present dangers. Um, <clears throat> and that these things have impaired mankind's ability to operate within the will of God. If you're honest with yourself and you look at what's going on in the world, people are not operating in the will of God. People are operating in the will of the world, in the will of the, the ruler of this world, in the ruler of self-pleasure, self-indulging. You know, if it feels good, do it. If it feels right, do it. It doesn't, regardless of the consequences. That's the time that we're living in. And if we don't warn people, we will be going to, what's that place, in a handbasket. That is what's going to happen. So it's our responsibilities as pastors, as ministers, as people, as Christians, as believers, to warn people of what's going to occur if they continue in these ways. People believe that they are good. They really do. And that the world is inherently good. People think that 
the world is good. I remember pointing out to someone about, hey, this world is, is evil, and they say I'm a pessimistic, that I'm pessimistic looking at the, the worst in the world. But that is what I see every day. It's the worst. It's the worst. All the corruption and the, the evil and wickedness in this world. And uh, I said, I'm not pessimistic. And I said, I'm not even optimistic. Because they said I should be optimistic about things. I said, I'm realistic. I'm not in denial of what is happening in this world we live in. <coughs> so what has happened, when you think that this is a kind, gentle world, then what you have to do, you have blinded yourself, uh, uh, from, and it prevents you from seeing how truly wicked um, and evil things are. People don't like to hear that. I've said that to people. I said, this place is wicked, or this world is wicked or something is wicked and evil, and it gets quiet. Now it's like, oh, what is this guy? Who is he? What is he talking about? Why is he saying this? I say it because I'm concerned. I say it because I care. I say it because it needs to be said. After hearing me say this, some people still will dispute it. I can say with people watching this, or someone watches it later, people are going to hear it, and they're going to dispute it. They go, this guy's nuts. He's crazy. He's one of those radical preachers and stuff. Fire and brimstone, hells, and all that stuff. Yes, I am, because I'm concerned about the state of this world. Perhaps because the people are so in love with the world. The Bible warns us not to be in love with the world. Love of the world has its consequences. And it's a shame if you find out too late. This next scripture here. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, there are some sermons out there on just this passage right here. And it's... it's it's, it's good that it's out there because what I just read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16 need to be explained and need to be uh, pushed forward that people will hear it and understand the love of the flesh. I mean, the pride and the pride, the love of the, I mean, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That is the uh, recipe for sin. In the second dream, I saw what mankind's action, how it had worsened to the brink of destruction. <clears throat> I saw the aftermath of the happenings uh, from the first dream. Like I say, it has gotten even worse. Every imagination of thoughts of man and the heart uh, became only evil continuously, just as it was in the days of Noah, the days of Lot. You know, if you look at the state of the world right now, I mean, it's always, you can look at history and you can see the same thing that's happened going on in the world now. Uh, recession, depressions, uh, gas prices, uh, empty shelves in the grocery stores, war, um, deception, corruption in government. You, that's always, you know, but I say now that, you know, in this generation, people are always say, hey, end times are coming, Christ is coming again. And you got people who say, yeah, that's always being said. But, you know, the Bible states it's, it's coming. And each time you say it, you get closer and closer to it, even though we don't know when that time <coughs> is. But we got to be prepared, you know, even if we die in that preparation. But it's better to die in preparation than to die in your sins because there will be consequences. There will be judgment. But I just want to point out, I'm going to give you the reference from the Bible to show you that what occurred then is no different from what's happening now. And the consequences of what took place then is going to take place again. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> in Luke chapter 17, verse 26 through 30, it says, And as it was in the days of Noah, uh, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Um, talking about when Jesus returned. They did eat. People did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day of Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, 
also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they did drink, drink. Uh, they bought, they sold, they planted, uh, they built. Uh, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The Bible tells us <clears throat> that in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, people are, that they ate, they drank, they married, they bought, they sold, etc. They carried on with their lives. They did all these things as though everything was all right. In other words, all of the people of those days uh, were totally wicked and in denial, but they were totally wicked. They did, did <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they were not the least bit concerned with what was going to occur or the consequences of being how they were. They didn't care. In the days of us, I'm talking about the days of Noah and the days of Lot, but now let me reference the days of us. The people in the dreams were also eating and drinking and carrying on with life as though everything was all right. We're doing that today. We're doing all these things today, and we think, that, oh, everything is all right. I'm good. You know, thinks about going to heaven. Say, you ask somebody on the street, oh, you think you're going to heaven? Yeah, I do. You get all kind of answer. Wow, I've been to church before. I mean, you, <laughs> you kind of answer you get. That was a real response that I received from someone. <laughs> so during the generation of Noah and Lot and the generation of us, we were carrying on without a single thought of the judgment of God. The people in the Noah and the Lot era were not expecting, <clears throat> not prepared for the wrath that would come and destroy them. Neither are we. Neither are we. Genesis chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 5 through 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it regretted, and he, I'm sorry, he re, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Now, you know, can you imagine God having regret of making mankind and all the things that come with the creation? He regretted that because we are so wicked and evil and so far from his will. Noah spent many years warning what the holy God was about to do. He did that. He had, he had a long time to build an ark and to minister to the people about the, what was coming. But no one listened. The people did not believe Noah and were content with their wickedness. It's the same today. Their hearts were hard and their ears were dull. No one repented. No one cared to seek God. Evil reproduced and overtook the world, just as it is today. People are not concerned with their salvation because they kind of believe that they are already saved. I said earlier that um, if you don't know that you're a sinner, you don't know that you need a savior. Because you think you're good. I'm good. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> but at, at funerals, everybody's put in heaven. Uh, he's in a better place now. <laughs> Scripture paints a clear picture of how the world will be before Jesus returns. Let's look at 2 Timothy. <clears throat> verse 3, I mean chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. We know this is true. A covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. We hear about this. This, this widespread of that going on. Unthankful, yes. Unholy, yes, yes. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, 
incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. People are having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We got to turn away. But we don't just, just gravitate to these people. We don't have to try to keep up with the Joneses or the dark Cardassians or the Smiths or whoever. No, keep up with the scriptures. Keep up with God. Amen. Try to catch up. Do the best you can. Mm -hmm. I really did not need to have that second dream that I had. To know the direction this sense for world was heading in. I didn't need that second dream to know that things were going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Deception today is widespread. It's very widespread. It is becoming increasingly um, obvious that to understand what the world was like in the days of Noah, we only need to pay attention to our current surroundings. We need a conviction. We need to get in the word and get convicted and read what the scripture says and then compare it to what's actually going on. It depends on what scripture you read. I mean, he talks about how we should be. You say, hey, that's not what's happening. And he talks about the evil in the world say, hey, bingo, bingo, that's it. That's what's going on. These terrible things are happening today because people desire supersedes the will of God. Can you see and understand this world that um, the powers which govern it, uh, the people who are in it, can you see it? Can you understand how we are? Do not be so in love with the things of this world that you ignore the things of God. We are, if you're honest with yourself, we are ignoring the things of God. We're not engaging in the things of God. We're not sharing the things of God. We're not um, showing in ourselves and, and how we talk and how we act and what we do. We're not sharing as though we are connected with God. So I'm warning you today. I'm warning you today as the people were warned before who ignored before. You cannot stop the fate of this world and its people from happening. Things that the Bible says is going to happen is going to happen. I believe the Bible from Genesis to maps. I believe what the Bible says. It is going to happen because the Bible says that it will, and I believe it. And I don't want to meet the fate of those who are not connected with God, with the Savior. But that does not mean that you have to be the victim of all these things that are happening. God, through his word, is telling you no. His word tells you no. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. It is possible to exist in this wicked world without conforming to its sinful nature. It is possible. Jesus came on the scene. God manifested himself in flesh to show us that it's possible. And now here we are. It doesn't matter what your past is, but it matters what your present and your future will be. And you can start today to make that change. <clears throat> I want to go here. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world. That's, that's what this ministry came out of this scripture, transformation. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, what is that acceptable, and what is that perfect will of God. For some reason, when I read the scripture, Romans 12, 2, and so I wanted to memorize it. It's a short scripture. It took me weeks, weeks, to memorize this scripture. I'm like, what is going on? Why can't I memorize Romans 12 too? I just had difficulties. I couldn't remember stuff. And I just kept at it. I just kept at it. And I kept at it. And then it stuck. And I just think I just had to keep doing, keep, keep at it to understand what it was saying to me. 
And so I had to keep looking at it over and over and over to memorize it. But it was more than just a memory. It was a conviction. And so transforming lives, you know, to, to, to the will of God. And that's what birthed this ministry. That's what birthed uh, the, the type of messages. I think I have a special assignment. And so, I, yeah, I talk about what I talk about a lot. I do. And I try to divert from this and, and preach something else, but I cannot come right back to this because it's needed. People's salvation is at stake. And so I, I can't get away from it. And I'm not trying anymore. This is my assignment. And this is what I will continue to preach. You need to live a life down here that matters up there. Love not the world you live in. Love the world that you want to spend eternity in. I'm referring to heaven. We got to get everything right, our mindset right, our actions correct. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, If ye be, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So we got to change our focus. Mm -hmm. See, it should have been uh, in that dream. Like I said, all these scenes and I would pop in there. I see the beaches and boom, there I was. I see the sporting event. I was in, included in those. I see the casino, ding, ding, ding. You know, I see all the bells and whistles. And here I am um, at the bar at the clubs. All these things were happening. But nothing, nothing, a window never popped open and I was in heaven. Not once, not even in the second dream. There wasn't a view that popped open. And here I am in heaven before God, in the presence of God. That did not happen. But that's what we want to happen. That will only happen when the time comes, when salvation, when we, for those who are saved, God will embrace them and we will be in his presence. That's the scene I want to pop up in. Believers in Jesus Christ are in the world. They are physically present here on earth. But believers are not of this world. They are not part of his value system. In John chapter 15, verse 19, <clears throat> if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. All you peculiar people out there who love God and, 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 and walk in righteousness, God loves you so much, but the world hates you so much. The, the scriptures warns us, it tells us that that is going to happen. Hey, that's why I'm not trying to please everybody. I, I want God to love me, and I don't care who else hates me. Do I want them to hate me? No. I want them to come follow me. I don't want people to follow me, but I want people to follow Jesus with me. That's what I'm trying to say. Because I, this is temporary. The pleasures and things, is just temporary. Those who are not saved, who operate within the world's traditions, culture, music, philosophies, etc., are of the world, and the world will love them. They will give you awards. They will praise you on TV. They will dress you up and put you on a showcase because the world loves you. The world loves and takes care of his own. It's evidence. It's all around us. And then we desire to, to have that done for us. No, that's smoke screen and mirrors. That's not what you want. It's like someone enticing a kid with candy. That's what the world is doing. You don't want to eat that. You want, you want God. You want God in your life. Come into the ministries. Come into the churches. The churches who are speaking the word. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Not the ones who try to empower you to be rich. But those who are trying to tell you the truth. The truth is what's going to make you free. If you are a believer, if you are a Christian, the world is going to hate you. So don't get all misty eyes and, and upset because 
The world hates you. The world hates me. The world hates you. Unless you're part of the world system. John chapter 17, verse 14 and 15. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou should have taken them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. So we're going to be in the world with all this wickedness. God's not taking us out, not yet. Not yet, but he will. But until then, we're going to be in the world with the evil, but we don't have to succumb to that. We have a choice. We have a God. We pray to him. He will strengthen you. He will cover you. He will protect you. Not saying that uh, you won't be impacted by things in the world. But yeah, what's, you know, that's only temporal too. So they can't hurt the flesh, but they can't kill the spirit, right? They can't, they can't do anything to the soul. Believers are set apart from the world. They are holy and live a righteous life. If you do that, you are on the right path. Believers are not to engage in the world's sinful activities, nor uh, retain the corrupt mind that the world creates, because it will do that. Do not conform to the world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. I'm not saying that believers can't go to the beach. I'm not saying those kind of things, or that they can't go to the movies. Uh, what, what movie you go to. I'm not saying that you can't enjoy the amusement parks or the sporting events. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just pointing out all the things that people engage in without a thought of God. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm just saying don't be lovers of pleasures more than you are a lover of God. That's what I'm telling you. First John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God and that the whole world lieth in wickedness. You have to be aware of that because that is the state of the world today. The pull of the world is strong and is tempting you always. The world never stops making offers um, and your flesh never stops window shopping for those offers. To love God above this world, you must continually renew your mind with the word of God and set your mind primarily on what is spiritual more than what is earthly. Become a believer of Lord Jesus. One final scripture. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost now you cannot go to heaven if you are continually in sin if you're going to continue in the ways of the world mm -hmm. so you have to repent you have to change you got to stop doing what God hates and hate those things that God hates and love those things that God loves. Amen. You got to repent. Yes, sir. And you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You got to be baptized. And people say, oh, that's just an outward expression of, of, inner, of your inner faith. Everything you do is an outward expression of your inner faith or belief. That's why you do it. But God tells you to do that. So people say, oh, it's symbolic. I don't care if I have to do a hula hoop jump rope and spin around three times to be saved. And that was what the Bible said to do. If the Bible tells us that we have to be baptized, I'm going to be baptized in Jesus' name. And the Bible tells us uh, because it's for the remission of sins. In the, in the Old Testament, they were slaughtering animals. You know, these, these animals without blemish. And that's for the forgiveness of their sin. But it was only temporary. But God was to sacrifice himself is Jesus Christ when he was crucified on that tree and that was for our salvation. He, he paid our sin debt and that was up to us to live a righteous life to fulfill uh, what God set up for us. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other thing in the scripture it says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You cannot 
go to heaven unless you have the Holy Ghost. And that's God's spirit living in you. Mm -hmm. Can't go to heaven with just your human spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit present. That's salvation. I hope that um, you receive the word today. Um, <clears throat> forgive me for <clears throat> just my, my voice and everything. And if I was rambling on things. Uh, but I hope you caught the key points of what I tried to convey to you. And that is that <clears throat> don't be pleasures of the world. Over, over, uh, don't love the pleasures of the world over loving the things of God. That's my main message mm -hmm. for you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this word, Father. I pray that all who have heard, uh, that weren't just hearers of the word, but they received it. And they have knowledge of it now and they have understanding of what was said. And Father God, that they will have wisdom to operate in this word, in this in God's will, to have the courage um, and, and the zeal and desire to separate from these things of the world that are sinful, <coughs> that are wrong, that are wicked. Father God, strengthen these people, uh, the hearers that I'm speaking to right now. Us give them strength, give them encouragement to keep going, to make the right decisions, to recognize what things that, that they can change, to know what things they they can, and, and to um, just don't get caught up with people and things that are not of you, Lord God. Try to bring them over. Try to make disciples. But if they won't come, don't let them influence you to come into the fold of the things um, that, of the wicked one. Father God, help us to know right from wrong and to do right from wrong. Um, and to find and to know the pleasures in knowing you, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for being mindful of us and for caring for us and for, um, for saving us. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' precious name. And amen, Lord God. May the church say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> thank you all for tuning in. <clears throat> And um, looking forward to uh, next week, a message that comes to mind. And I don't know if that message will stick, but it was that, uh, it was called different. It's called difference scares people. Different scares people. So tune in next week. I haven't written it, but that's what was given to me. Different scares people. Thank you all for joining. Be blessed.